We are nearly halfway through the year and I've only read 31 books out of my 100 book target. Welcome back everyone, welcome to May's reading wrap up. I am sat on the floor to talk about books as always. I'm sorry it's coming a little bit late, you can probably hear it but I have been a little bit poorly, I'm still a little bit hoarse so I haven't really felt like filming much. A husky voice just isn't the one for me. May was a really tough reading month for me, I started off with two books that I really didn't enjoy and then I started a book that is just too long and complex after two bad books which I haven't finished haven't even got halfway through it so I've managed to read four books this month two bad reviews two okay reviews I think yeah two okay reviews four is still good four averages at like one a week which is good for me but that takes me up to a total of 31 books out of 100 for the whole year and we're nearly halfway through so I was hoping to be going a bit quicker by now that being said it's not really about the numbers is it and we all get into reading slumps I'm just annoyed that I read books that I didn't like you know it just feels like a waste of your time let's get rid of all the negativity first read of the month was Hunting Adeline by H.D. Carlton this is a sequel of Haunting Adeline. It's book two of the cat and mouse duet, I believe the series is called. It's a very dark romance, very NSFW, very spicy, very steamy, and it's one out of five stars for me. I reviewed book one in April's video, which I will link somewhere on the screen or pop in the description box for you. I didn't love book one either, but book one was left on a cliffhanger, so I had to read book two. I shouldn't have really read book two, it doesn't really feel fair. I would acknowledge that the content of the book and like the kinks and the fetishes in it it's not written for me i said it in the last video if you're not into like consensual non-consent it's not a book for you so i don't really feel like i can review it that fairly because i'm not the target audience two big things for me that i noticed was i felt like the plot really dragged on for a long time maybe it's because there was like a double increase on sexual violence in book two but yeah I just it felt much longer I think I would have preferred the series if maybe it was a longer book and both books were condensed into one also I just feel like Zayd's character development really slowed down it he started feeling a bit 2d by like halfway three quarters of the way through the book without giving any spoilers I think he kind of went backwards and morphed into this very like 2d murderous revenge machine of a man that's only interested in like kill 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 obviously that's his whole thing that's absolutely fine but i would have preferred a bit more character development from him i don't really enjoy giving books one out of five stars especially when i've gone out of my way to read a book that's clearly like not my style of book so please just take that with a pinch of salt i forgot to say i read that on kindle second read of the month was souls and sorrows by sav r miller i read this on my kindle if you have kindle unlimited it's free to download this is a dark spicy romance and it got two and a half stars from me i have mentioned this series before this is part of the monsters and muses series this is book five they are standalone books but they kind of have multiverse vibes not multiverse vibes but the, there's characters crossing over like families crossing over that kind of thing you don't need to read the others but it helps. So for a mini synopsis, this is kind of loosely inspired by the story of Eros and Psyche. Ariana is our female MC and she's a bit of a wild card. She is involved with the mob. She used to be a, like a party girl, a socialite. She's a bit of a loose cannon. She goes out and kind of makes some irresponsible decisions she likes the danger she likes chasing the danger she also is a very traumatized girl which adds an extra layer to her character cash on the other hand who's the male mc the love interest he's a complete opposite i feel like he's definitely a virgo he's very planned very orderly not very impulsive somehow she ends up at some kind of like dive bar auctioning herself off i can't quite remember why and he sees her and he's like yep yeah, I'll have her, buys her for a quarter of a billion, very unlike him. I should clarify he's doing it with good intentions to rescue her. He really wants her, he sees that she's a very tortured soul, she doesn't really trust him, she has a lot of like mob ties. So we have got that forced marriage trope which is quite popular in a lot of dark romance. Not my favourite, 
bar, it works. It's just simple that there are other books in the series that I prefer a lot more to this. I don't really feel like this book held its own. There's definitely better character pairings that I prefer. I didn't find any of the main characters like particularly lovable. Like I felt like I should have loved Cash, but I didn't. I didn't find him that appealing. Not to keep comparing, but there is such clear plot in the other books. This one just felt a bit lacklustre. I didn't feel like the plot was plotting. It doesn't bother me so it doesn't lose a star rating for it but this book is significantly more violent than the other books I felt at least. It was a bit more gruesome, there was a lot more violence and violent language and like violent descriptors. Right book three, next up another spicy book. You could tell I didn't enjoy the last two that much and I just needed a palate cleanser book as I like to call them. A quick fun easy read. I read Priest by Sierra Simone. This is a very NS SFW steamy romance and it gets 3.5 stars from me. A hot young priest um, has a mysterious stranger come into his confessional booth. She's a new woman in town, Poppy. My goodness, it's electric from the moment they meet. <laughs> the description really makes me laugh. My name is Tyler Anselm Bell. I'm 29 years old. Six months ago, I broke my vow of celibacy on the altar of my own church, and God help me, I would do it again. I'm a priest, and this is my confession. This book is highly discussed. Obviously, I do understand that it, it will make people uncomfortable. It's valid if it makes you feel uncomfortable. I was okay with it. Some people won't be, some people will be. All of that side, I thought it was quite a fun read. It was just like a good steamy read, I thought. It was definitely a palate cleansing book for me. Um, I thought it would be a lot worse, so I think I went in with quite low expectations and was pleasantly surprised that I did not mind the writing. I like Tyler's character, especially at the beginning. That's the priest, I feel like he's pretty rounded out. I enjoy that we get a little bit of backstory. It just makes it a bit more, there's a bit more context, there's a bit more story at the beginning. Fairly predictable plot but you know enough to keep things interesting enough to keep me reading poppy the female main character was a little bit annoying i don't know i don't know it's always like a svelte childlike figure with just massive jugs that being said i have just read three smut books in a row so maybe it's just time to read something else she's always wearing red lipstick and you know i don't know like i think i just need to chill out on the smut books maybe I don't think there's actually anything wrong with Sierra's writing. I think, I think I've just read too much. I won't spoil it, but I didn't like the last quarter of the book. If you've read it, let me know what you thought of the ending. I don't know, it just didn't sit right with me, but maybe I'll never be happy with the ending of a book. I would recommend this if you just want something a little different. You'll be pleased to know that book four isn't a spicy romance book. So my last book of the month was Daughter of No Worlds by Carissa Broadbent. This is a fantasy romance, how predictable of me, and it gets four stars out of five. So Tassana's a former slave. She's fighting for justice. She decides to journey away from her old life, which she's managed to get herself out of, leave like all her loved ones and her best friends behind. She journeys to like the main city. You know, she's had eyes on the prize for a really, really long time. Um, but in order to prove that she's worthy enough to be there, that her magic skills are good enough. She basically is placed into an apprenticeship that she has to complete. She gets paired with Max, who absolutely does not want to be paired with her. And what do we have here? A recipe for romance. I'm not gonna lie, I do love a little like grumpy sunshine trope. Obviously in last month's review, I read a lot of Carissa Broadbent, so I was really excited to read this one. I don't really like the cover, so I was a bit nervous. I was like, oh, what if I what if I like, hate the second series that I've read? And then it's just like disappointing, isn't it? But actually I was really pleasantly surprised. One thing we know Carissa can do is write romance, tension, and a steamy scene. She's very, very good at that. I personally love a strong wood woman who will like stop at nothing to prove everyone around her wrong and get what she wants and get justice. Although sometimes MCs like that can make some absolutely terrible decisions. It's very frustrating to read. I will say it's quite a slow burn, but the storyline in the first half of the book is good enough that it keeps you captivated. Really enjoyed the unfolding of like the trainer trainee relationship with like the training montages, kind of snippets of their backstory, these very like cozy, tender scenes spring to mind of kind of that begrudging friendship and his like small like seed of pride, especially as she starts to improve. And then obviously she starts to hate him less because we find out a little bit more about his sad isolated life. For me that tenderness is always captured really well in her books, I really enjoy it. Not really sure how I feel kind of about the second half to last quarter of the book. 
don't know if that's maybe because I'm too invested in them as a couple and I want to learn more about them and their relationship and it starts to get a bit more like action-y. I am currently reading book two but I didn't finish it in time to fit it in this video so that will be right at the start of next month I'm sure. A short little reading wrap up for you today, just a little four. As always I will put my story graph down in the description box. I'll link last month's video as well because I know there's some series carry over here. I felt like May was a bit of a reading slump for me so I think I'm going to just like lay off the spicy romance and the fantasy romance for a bit and actually maybe start working through some of my physical TBR. Although I did say that last month because all my books this month were digital. Huge thank you to all of you for bearing with my uh, slightly shoddy posting while I've been feeling unwell. I've been so busy and so unwell and haven't felt like filming and it's just such a pain when you feel like you're gonna cough every time you talk. I'm gonna try film some more bookish content soon. I do have a little list of ideas, but if there's anything particularly bookish you wanna see, pop it in the comments, let me know, suggestions, you can always DM me on Instagram as well. Lots of love, I'll see you on the June reading wrap up.